Hello and welcome back. Now, before we go ahead and enable Unity Catalog in our workspace, it is very important to know what was the situation before Unity Catalog. So, if you go to the Catalog tab, you can see there is only one catalog now, which is Hive Metastore. So, before Unity Catalog, we used to have one default catalog, which is called Hive Metastore. And we used to save all our structured data assets under this Hive Metastore. Okay. So, in order to use this, we need a compute. You can either start a serverless warehouse or we can go ahead and start our compute and use that for this. So let me just go back and let me just start our cluster. So I'll just go ahead and click on start. I'll click on confirm. While this is starting, let's go back and create a new notebook. So I'll go to workspace inside notebook and I'll click on notebook. I'll rename this notebook to Hive Metastore. So let's go ahead and attach our cluster here and we'll wait for this to start. Okay, our cluster is up and running. Let's go ahead on the left hand tab and click on catalog. And now we can see Hive Metastore here, right? And let me just expand this. So it will load all of the schema that is currently present. So there is only one schema that is by default provided under Hive Metastore, which is the default schema. Now, if you don't specify any schema while creating a table, this table would go directly under this default schema. So we will go ahead and just create our first schema under Hive Metastore. Now, before we do that, let me just go ahead and change the language to SQL because we are going to use SQL for all of this. Okay. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll create our scheme. And to create a schema, we can use a command called create schema and the name of the schema, which is branch. Okay. So let me just run this. Okay. So this says, okay. Now let me go ahead and refresh the catalog and you can see a new schema created called branch. The next thing that I'll do is I'll create a managed table. Now, what exactly is a managed table? It means both your metadata, which is your schema and your data would be managed by the Metastore. So once you drop your managed table, both your metadata, which is your schema and your data would be gone. So let's go ahead and create our first managed table, which is employee under our branch schema. So this is the create table command that I'm going to use. So it says create table branch.emp where branch is our schema and emp is our table name. And these are all the column configurations. Okay. Now, if you notice, I have not defined any location here. Nothing other than table definition is mentioned. Okay. So this is two level namespace. It means schema dot table name. And this was what we used to do in Hive Metastore. Okay. So let me just go ahead and run this. Awesome. Our table is created. Okay. Let me go ahead and expand branch and you can see EMP table here. Let's go ahead and write describe command in order to see what exactly is the definition for the employee table. Okay. To do that, I'll write describe and and I'll use extended in order to see everything okay, about the table. And I'll write branch.emp. Let me just run this. Awesome. We can see a lot of information about the table. If we scroll down, we can see the location where the data is stored. Okay. And this is the managed location. This is DBFS, which is Databricks file system. And this is the managed location where Databricks stores the data for a managed table until you define the location explicitly for an external table. Okay. For a managed table, all of the data under Hive Metastore goes into the Hive warehouse. And this is exactly the storage account that Databricks manages. So if you go back to our Azure portal, if I expand the resource group and under manage resource group, this is the storage account where your data is stored. Okay. And this is the managed resource group that Databricks manages. So this is the location where all your data is stored. Now we can go ahead and check that out as well. Okay. Before that, if you see the default provider for the table is still. So whenever you create a managed table in Databricks, the default table that is created is of form Delta. Okay. Let's go ahead and check out that exact DBFS location where all the data for EMP would be stored. Okay. Before that, let me just push in some of the data inside the EMP table. So I'm going to use three insert queries in order to push some of the data inside that managed EMP table. Okay. Let me just run the insert queries. Awesome. Data is inserted, right? Let me just go ahead and see that. To do that, I'll write select star from branch.emp and I'll run this. You can see all the three data inserted inside the EMP table. Okay. Let's go ahead and check out the managed path. So in order to do that, Databricks provide us with a utility called dbutils. We are going to talk about this later. For now, you can just follow along. To do that, you can use the Python magic command and under that, you can write dbutils dot fs which stands for file system ls to list okay now i'll just copy the managed location from top and this is the managed location right i'll copy this and i'll paste it here okay and i'll run so this shows you all the parquet file under this location okay and this is exactly where your data is stored and if you see this is a delta table by default okay now 
If I go back, you can see the type is also managed. So we already discussed. If you do not specify any location explicitly in a table, this is by default a managed data table. Okay, let's go ahead and create our first external table as well. To do that, I'll use this create table command. I've just named the table as emp underscore ext for external, which is again under the same bronze schema. Okay, this time I've defined a location where your data would be stored. So our data would be stored under dbfs, under a temporary directory and under emp ext. Okay, let me just go ahead and run this. Awesome, our table is created, right? Let's go ahead and see this table. To do that, I'll write describe extended and I'll write branch.emp.ext. Okay, let me run this. Awesome, we can see the table definition. And this time, if you see, this is external table. Okay, and we have defined a location here. And this is the location where the table data would be stored. Let's go ahead and push some data into it. So I'll just copy all of the insert queries from the top. And I'll change it to EMP EXT. Okay, we'll push in the same data inside the external table as well. Okay, let me just run this. Awesome, data is inserted. Let me just query the table. So I'll do select star from branch dot EMP EXT. Okay, let me run this. You can see all the three data, right? We can go ahead and query the location as well. So we'll use the same DB utils command. So I'll just copy everything from top. I'll go to bottom, paste it here. Now I'll change the location where the data is stored. So I'll copy this dbfs location and I'll paste it here. Okay, let me run this. We can see the data is there. Okay, now let's check out the main difference between the managed and an external table. Okay, to do that, I'll just drop the managed table first. So I'll write drop table branch.emp. Okay, before that, I'll just refresh my catalog. So you can see both the tables are here. Okay. So let me just run this. Awesome, my table is dropped, right? Let me refresh the catalog. Now you can see the EMP managed table is gone. Now let's just go ahead and check the location where the data was stored. So this was the location where the EMP data was stored, right? Let me just query this location. And you can see it says this location does not exist. So let me just go back to the database label of branch and you can see there is no data. Okay, so the default data was stored under warehouse branch.db, which stands for the database, which is the schema name. Okay, so if you have a different schema, for example, silver, the schema would be created with the name, the location would be created with the name of silver.db. DB stands for database, and this is how Hive Metastore manages the data. Okay, under this, you will find the table name. So we just drop the EMP table. So this is gone. Okay, let's do the same thing. We'll drop the external table now. So I'll just mention underscore ext in the end, and I'll run this. Awesome, the table is dropped, right? Let me just refresh this and you can see there is no data. Okay, now let's go ahead and see the same debutals command at this external location. So I'll run this. Now, if you see the data still exist. Okay, and this is the main difference between a managed table and an external table. So tomorrow, if you want to create another table, you can go ahead and use this path in order to create the table. So I'll just go ahead and create and run the create table command that we used previously, right? So this is the create table command that we create. So I'll just go ahead and run this again. So once I do this, this tables get created, right? Let me just refresh this and you can see the external table is present now. Okay. Let me just go ahead and run a select star from the external now. And if I do this, you can see the data in the table. Okay. This is because this external table is pointing to the same data location which exists, right? We just created the table back on that location and the data exists at that location and because of which the metadata is created and now you can even query the data at that location. Okay, that's the benefit of external table on top of managed table. Now you can also create views in Hive Meta Store. That is the same query. You can do create view and you can give the view name. So I can just write branch dot emp view and I can write as and I can write the query which is say select star from branch dot emp and let's filter the data for D101. Okay, so we'll write where dpt code is equals to d101 okay let me just create this view okay sorry my bad it should be external right so i'll just make ext and let me run this again so this view is created okay let me just go ahead and query this view now so i'll do select star from and i'll use the same view name so i'll just copy it from top paste it here before that let me refresh the catalog and you can see this view created okay let me just go ahead and run this 
and you can see the data okay so you can also use views in hive catalog so you can also use a describe command in order to see the detail of the view so you can just copy this you can write describe extended and you can paste this here and you can run this so it will show you all the information so if you see this is a type of view okay and you can see the query it is used for that view okay so this is a permanent view it means even if i terminate this cluster and restart this view will still exist other than this, there are temporary views and materialized views. We are going to look that later in this course. But for now, you need to know views are something which is permanent. For example, once you create a view, and even if you restart your cluster, the view will still exist. Okay, you can go ahead and query the data from the view. And views are basically nothing which are querying data from the underlying table. Okay, using the same query that you defined for that view. So we define this query, and whenever you select star from that view, that view will run this query in the background in order to fetch data from the table. Okay, so today we understood the difference between a managed table and an external table and how Hive Metastore used to work. Now, in our next video, we are going to enable Unity Catalog in our workspace and we are going to work ahead with Unity Catalog going forward. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.